I think people realize that if you smoke cigarettes, it's probably bad for your health. I don't think they thought um, if you never walked and lived in a community that didn't encourage walking, that that was bad for your health also. And it's not always because you choose to eat too much. It's not always because you choose not to do particular things from an individual perspective, but it's because of some of the availability of things in your community. But perhaps embedded in all of this is a tremendous opportunity to create communities where we can walk, where we can connect with each other, perhaps where we can grow our own food. More and more, public health experts are coming to the frightening conclusion that the places where we live are killing us. One of the first public health experts to discover this terrifying correlation was Dr. Richard Jackson, a medical doctor specializing in pediatrics. Over the past decade, much of Dr. Jackson's work has focused on how the built environment, including architecture and urban planning, affect our health. We've got to create pleasing places for people to be. And so good designers, good architects, good political leadership are really important to create communities that work for people. Designing Healthy Cities is a series of one-hour, self-contained episodes. Individual episodes will explore such topics as vast ruined urban wastelands like Detroit, Michigan. It was largely industrial. This is one of the abandoned auto factories. This was a Fleetwood factory. My grandfather used to work here a lot of vacant buildings, a lot of businesses that are boarded up, uh, houses that are, that are bombed out. And today, uh, you, you see we are ground zero. We are the New Orleans without Katrina. Could this kind of devastation be a new frontier for brave, resourceful urban pioneers? The house I bought for $549 is really a chance for me to make art part of my life. When property loses economic value, it becomes open to all kinds of other possibilities and opportunities that property that has a high economic value can't sponsor. It allows all kinds of people to do all kinds of things that they can't do in a city that functions properly. It might look like a bad city, but one thing you cannot do is judge the book by its cover. Another episode questions whether traditional toxic environments, such as ports, have to be hazardous to the health of the people who live within these polluted zones. How many of you are taking medicine for asthma? All of you have asthma? Mm -hmm. We've got ships that burn this bunker fuel, which is a high sulfur fuel that generates very noxious diesel particulates. We've got diesel trains that come into the port and, and pick up the containers and ship them all around the state. We've got trucks that line up at the port that are burning diesel fuels and they're sitting much of the time keeping their engines running. The load of soot that is in the air in West Oakland is three times that of the county background level. And the disease rate is overwhelmingly concentrated in these areas in heart disease, asthma, cancer, and other forms of chronic lung disease. In fact, the cancer risk from the pollution coming out of the diesel pollution is seven times higher than the rest of California. Asthma rates are 25% higher. Can new technology and compromise help transform commerce hubs like Oakland, California? Our goal is an emissions reduction of 85% by the year 2020. Issues of health and design are not limited to large urban areas. In mid and small town America, shifting economic opportunities and big box retail contribute to the death of many once vibrant historic downtowns and main streets. As a country, forgotten how great civilizations, communities, and neighborhoods work. So there's a reason why the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker live near each other. It makes sense. They can run into each other on the corner. They can walk to work or see their family at lunchtime because they're on foot and not behind the wheel of a car stuck in traffic. In our episode, Retrofitting Suburbia, Dr. Jackson explores in detail the effects of post-World War II suburban sprawl and the vast suburban shopping malls that contributed to the death of many a downtown city. Today, rising transportation costs, changing demographics, and shifts in our economy contribute to the suburbs and gigantic malls themselves imploding. 
can and should the suburbs and dead malls be repurposed into lively, sustainable communities? We need to be just as critical and creative in redeveloping and reimagining our, our suburbs as we have been with our cities. Another of the many topics Designing Healthy Cities will explore are transportation issues, such as designing communities around public transportation, making cities more walkable and bike friendly. From the moment I leave my house to the moment I arrive at my office, I don't have to hit one stop sign, one red light. I have a direct bike route that gets me to work faster than a car. Our last episode explores attempts in the past and present to create ideal communities in which health and design were or are perfectly balanced. Completed in 1960 as part of Detroit's controversial urban renewal program, the inspired collaboration of strong personalities that included the famed and infamous architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe resulted in the 13-acre diverse income community of Lafayette Park. Growing up here as a child, you could just run anywhere and people had the eyes on the street, they, they could watch you wherever you were. Over 40 years later, Lafayette Park remains a brilliant green oasis of health and design in an otherwise broken city. In rural Illinois, the planned development of Prairie Crossing centers around an organic farm in which residents are encouraged to help out with the chores. We started with the farm because Vicki uh, said this would be a key to the community, it could be its heart. She was absolutely right. The small town of Rosetto, Pennsylvania was the subject of an extensive medical study that linked the residents' good health with their strong ties to community. We've got to fix America so it works for our children. And if it works for our children, it's going to work for our elderly, and it's going to work for everyone in between. Together with Dr. Jackson, we hope to make his vision a reality through our epic series, Designing Healthy Cities. <laughs>